Hi everyone, it's me, Natalie. I was not planning to do a video today, but I went to the library book sale and we all know that means Natalie just buys books. I have a pile of books in front of me, so I just wanted to run through them quickly and show them to you because I like seeing what people get at library book sales. I'm gonna start out with the most random book that I bought. Yeah, I bought for You by Ian McEwan, which is li the libretto for Michael Berkeley's opera. Never seen an opera, never read Ian McEwan, but decided that now is the time for me to pick this up. <laughs> I think, I don't know, I don't know why I picked it up. Maybe it'll open something new for me. You never know. It's only tiny. The next book I got it's the 12 Secrets of Highly Creative Women. I got told by a tarot reader years ago that I was creative and I'm still yet to tap completely into that, but um, I picked this up and then, here's the secret. Look inside it. Someone went to town and it's all about, you know, um, their creativity, but a lot about permaculture and yeah living slowly and doing and I just I just couldn't resist taking this home and kind of study somebody else's notes at the moment I'm obsessed with setting up our own garden and um I love permaculture because it was it's an Australian concept it was created here so I also love the idea that things get have multiple uses and that you can set your space up so that everything kind of is connected and, and um, feeds off each other and so you replicate how nature works in that way. So um, I've been furiously reading lots of stuff about it and when I saw these notes I was like yes and then I found two permaculture books. This one with this gorgeous cover, Permaculture Designer's Manual with lots of diagrams and things in there and then the basics of permaculture design. So I'm going to devour those. I also found cost-effective self-sufficiency, which I don't think I, I have a desire to reduce my waste and I have a desire to, you know, have the garden and the chooks and all that sort of stuff, but I don't really, you know, I don't need to be off the grid, but maybe this will lead me onto something. You never know. So then that led to this, which is a modern herbal, which is just a heap of different plants and their uses and just stuff about them, which yeah, always makes me happy. And then we go into the food books because of that. <laughs> so Japanese foods that heal, who knows? And then all of my cookbooks, I've never, cooked anything by this woman before. I've just seen her on TV, so it could be good. Um, another Annabelle Langbeam, because I need to have every cookbook she's ever made, apparently. Oh, a slow cooker cookbook, because we're coming into the cold winter months. Some jams and preserves, egged on by, um, we found a Fajoa tree, Fajoa, which is a New Zealand fruit. We found it in our yard. So I've got to do some preserving of Fajoas. And then casual entertaining, because I love me a good dinner party. So they're the kind of non-fiction books. <laughs> and then I filled a bag for $15 of fiction stuff. So I'll just quickly run through them. Um, this is Migratory Animals, Mary Helen Specht. Um, this is about a woman who, yeah, has been doing research in Nigeria and she comes home and then discovers that she's developing some symptoms of a genetic disease that killed her mother. And then it's about, you know, her dealing with that, her extended community dealing with that, and also her desire to go back to Africa. So, and it's got birds on the covers. It's fine. Oh, I haven't read this yet. Should I? You know, like I just pick it up because it won the Pulitzer Prize, but I have lost a lot of faith in book prizes lately, except for the BookTube Prize. Though, if happiness doesn't get through on the Booktube Prize by Emanata Fora, then, um, yeah, I'm going to lose faith in that prize too. 
Oh. oh, this is just the perfect Natali book. Are you ready for this? It has Delhi in the title, so Indian. A sweeper discovers a cache of black money and escapes to see the Taj Mahal with his underage mistress. Yes. A Dalit races to reclaim his life stolen by an upper class identity thief. Don't know what a Dalit is, but yes. And then a slum baby's head gets bigger and bigger as he gets smarter and smarter while his family tries to find a cure. Oh man. Right. That sounds full on. Oh no. Um, so yeah, it says it's three stinging comic tales of living and surviving in today's globalized India. A total Natali book. Oh, I got this because I borrowed it from the library and I love this book. Um, and I didn't have a copy of my own, so I snapped it up. So I can sit on my shelf and I can be remembered of how much I love this book. Ah, oh, Miriam Taves. That's Sean's fault. I don't even know what this is about. I just saw that name and went, yes, radio. A 19 year old, she's in a Mennonite community. Oh, she's standing up to people and fleeing and oish. This could get full on. It's just simply because of that author I picked it up. Oh, I like books about people setting up lives in different countries. This woman is doing that in France. And she comp contemplates the meaning of home and the importance of remembrance. Cool. Could be a warm hug. Could be incredibly sad. Could be incredibly boring. We will see. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Sarah Moss. It's on a Scottish island. Her ecologist husband takes her there to count the puffins and she's got a little baby and she discovers a, a baby skeleton in the garden and then she goes on the hunt of where that comes from and who was there before. What's this? Oh, Alexis Wright. I'm meant to be reading uh, Carpenteria with Jacqueline right now. This is an Australian Indigenous author and we just both have been... In crazy land so it hasn't happened but I saw this I, I really really want to delve into her work for sure she's well um, celebrated oh I don't know Araminta Hall I don't know told from the eyes of dot I think yeah she's only little setting a Welsh village I don't know it intrigued me <laughs> oh here's um a Helen Dunmore book. I've never read any of hers, but there was a book. What was the book that was going around booktube a while back? Oh, I can't even remember. Somebody can tell me. Yeah, but this is, you know, Finland in 1901. Could be fun. Historical fiction. We'll see. Um, what else? Oh, this is purely a cover by and deckled edges. What's this about? Oh, yes, right. I remember reading this. This man is in Arizona and he goes to get his paper in the morning and he finds a young Navajo man who's been beaten and is dying outside his house. And so um, he sort of delves, he meets the, this man's family and, you know, makes him assess his own world. So, yeah, that sounded interesting to me. Ah, oh, ah, oh, yes, the word right so this is like a book about Sherlock Holmes that wasn't written by Arthur Conan Doyle and there's a word for it and Steve Donahue did a video the other day I've never picked up these kind of books because I you know think I needed to be a purist about it or something but Steve introduced me to Sherlock Holmes and he reads these kind of books so you know what I mean what are they called anyway Help me out. I can't remember. Anyway, because he introduced me to him and he does it, I thought, well, I'll give it a go. I don't know if this is a good one or not, but we shall see. <laughs> um, and then I've got, oh, Music and Freedom. This is an Australian book. What's this about? Yeah, Alice. Yeah, Alice is really good at the piano and she lives in rural Australia. So she goes to a boarding school in England. Um, and then she goes to the Royal College of Music and then she, oh, she meets Edward. Oh, no. <laughs> An economics professor who sweeps her off her feet. No, Alice. Men ruin everything, Alice. 
Edward's damaged. She is trapped. Happens every time. And lastly, an Ali Smith book. I've only ever seen the winter and summer. I've got winter here. These ones. But um, this is lovely. It says um, it's a, stories about what we do with books and what they do with us. Has anyone ever, has anyone ever read this? Looks fun. Anyway, I don't know if I can do the pile. Ugh, that's them, minus one that fell off. <laughs> so that's my book haul. I had a great time. It's on again tomorrow and I don't know whether they bring out a whole new pile of books. So we'll see if I get back there tomorrow. But I think this is enough, right? <laughs> Thanks for going through these books with me.